So hello everybody. My name is Andrei Vojvoda. I'm from Czech Republic, from Brno, from Central European Institute of Technology. And uh, today I will tell you something about the dielectric nanoparticle enhanced brillnite scattering spectroscopy of spin waves. So we will start with the outline uh, and let's go to the motivation and principle. Nowadays, the focus of the spin wave community is uh, moved to nanoscale spin waves as they can provide uh, better energy efficiency and smaller group delays in comparison to the uh, long wavelength spin waves. But it's quite challenging to investigate these uh, spin waves because one has to fabricate state-of-the-art nanolithography to perform electrical measurements. And for spatial imaging, uh, it, is, it is possible only to image them with synchrotron radiation, which is very time and resource demanding technique. But recently uh, it was shown by Urajadin group that we can use the plasmonic resonance to detect these nanoscale spin waves optically. But uh, this approach is not very efficient and the uh, measurements are very time consuming. So in uh, our work, we focused to the electric enhanced uh, Mie, res mie uh, resonance to detect these short wavelength spin waves more effectively. So, but let's go uh, to the principle of the brill night scattering uh, process. Mm -hmm. So we have incident green light with certain frequency and momentum, and this light scatters to uh, one magnon and scattered light in the so-called Stokes process. For simplicity, we will stick only to uh, the Stokes process and omit the anti-Stokes. So in this case, both the energy or frequency, if you want, and momentum has to be, or uh, wave, uh, wave number has to be uh, conserved. So you cannot probe the magnons with higher K value than is uh, the projection of the free light uh, momentum or K, K values. So in our approach, we took the very same incident light, but before interacting with magnons, we converted to so-called near-field or, near or evanescent wave. And then it can interact with the magnons with higher uh, momentum or shorter wavelengths. Uh, if, I if I will try to put it into the Hayes-Fenn arguments, uh, we can see that uh, this left side has to equal with the right side and we could pro we could have higher real in plane momentum by introducing this complex part or this Im imaginary part which is subtracted under under this uh, square root allowing us to detect the spin waves with shorter wavelengths so to summarize we use a near field or sub diffractional restriction of the light to enhance the detection sensitivity to higher wave numbers or short wave lives of micro BLS setup. So we will move to the experimental geometry or schematics of our experiment. So we started with uh, mm. the magnetic permalloy layer of 30 nanometers. So permalloy is alloy of nickel and iron and deposited it on silicon substrate. Then we perform some kind of basic uh, magnetic characterization, such as vector network analyzer, ferromagnetic, ferromagnetic uh, resonance measurement, and brion light scattering, conventional brion light scattering spectra, and VSM. And we got uh, all of the magnetic constants, which were necessary for analyzing the results and performing uh, simulations, which will be discussed later. Uh, then we fabricate on the top of the layer the dielectric nanoresonators which consist of the disk with the diameter of 175 nanometers and the height of uh, 60 nanometers made of uh, sputtered silicon by magnetron so here is the SEM image uh, with the detail of the in, on the individual nano disk so after that we took the sample and put it to our micro BLS setup, where we used the green laser light focused into the objective lens with high numerical aperture. So we integrate over 
lot of uh, angles of incidence and then analyze the backscattered light in the tandem fabri perot uh, interferometer and detect by single photon counter. So now I will uh, introduce uh, the signal mm -hmm. of the thermal Brion light scattering or micro BLS. So here we have so-called Bloch function or uh, density of states of spin waves independence of frequency and wave number. In other words, this just shows uh, the dispersion relation of the spin waves uh, here for certain geometry. In this case, so-called Damon-Eschbach or k perpendicular to m. Uh, but if we want to understand the micro BLS signal, we have to multiply this block function by the detection sensitivity of the BLS. So here there, there are two, uh, let's say, example of detection sensitivity, one which is uh, quite narrow, and this is uh, the standard or the conventional micro BLS. And here we can see that we will be able to only interact with a uh, very restricted region of the allowed states in the vicinity of the, from, of the uh, gamma point from z 0 to 11 radians per micrometer. While if we increase the width of this detection function, we can see that we can uh, detect a lot, of, lot more states. But uh, this is not what directly BLS can, micro BLS can detect, it is a block function. Rather, it uh, detects the density of states independent of frequency. So basically, uh, it's uh, equal to just sum up this matrix to the y-axis. And here are the examples. So for the case of uh, narrower detection function, we can see this narrow uh, spin wave band. But in case of much broader, uh, much broader detection function, we can see that this spin wave band extends towards the higher frequencies. So now we, we use this knowledge and we will uh, analyze and perform the experiment. So these black dots and these black dots are uh, the conventional micro BLS thermal measurements, while these reds are uh, detected by the smear enhanced BLS, or they are detected with the beam spot positioned on the individual nano disk. And we can directly see that in the case of this 50 millimeters, slightly slower field, uh, the band is much wider and it spans towards the higher frequencies, which in turn means that we, we were able to detect the uh, higher wave numbers or shorter wavelengths. Uh, the, the situation is a bit more complicated here in this high field because we can see that the band uh, is widened towards the both sides, but more on that later. So uh, we took this data and use uh, this empiric, uh, we use the, this empiric model to fit them and to evaluate uh, the enhancement. And also in order to see the very nice fit, uh, just assuming the Gaussian detection function. But uh, as I said earlier, there is this discrepancy of the widening towards only towards the higher frequencies in the low field and towards the both sides in the higher field 550 millitesla. And this can be explained by plotting this dispersion relation. Because now we see that in the low field, the, dispersion, the lowest uh, point or the point with the lowest energy or lowest frequency is already measured by the standard micro BLS technique. So there is no space to uh, widen it more towards the lower frequencies. While on the other hand, in the high, high field, we can still probe uh, the magnons with lower frequencies. So that's the reason why the dispersion is widened to both sides in the case of high field. So to conclude, uh, we measured uh, individual silicon disk and we were able to increase the detection sensitivity of micro BLS from 11 radians per micrometer in the case of the bare film to something like 55 radians per micrometer when we were measuring on the individual silicon nano disk. Uh, also, uh, the signal strength or the amplitude of the detection fun function was increased. And if we look at the overall signal, the factor of increase in, of increment is something like 5.3. And here uh, are shown the fitted detection function, so these gammas. So now let's move uh, to the mere resonance 
phenomena, these underlying phenomena. So mere resonances are electromagnetic resonances in cavities or in nanoresonators induced by uh, the incident laser light. Uh, they occur in dielectric materials. In our case, we choose the silicon. So uh, it's absolutely necessary to restrict the light to subdiffraction regions to really be able to interact with these nanoscale spin waves. And this happens when we hit the resonance condition. So here we can see uh, the sweep through the diameters of the disks. And uh, we can see that the resonance condition is fulfilled for 532 nanometers, which is our used uh, laser wavelength for the diameter of 175 nanometer. So that's the reason why we use uh, that for all the experiments. Uh, but to look at the underlying uh, BLS process, you can understand it as induced polarization in the metallic layer by uh, care or care interaction or care effect or Foyt effect, if you if you wish. So this uh, material susceptibility represents the susceptibility induced by the spin wave via this uh, linear magneto-optical coupling, while this represents the incident field. So by analyzing this equation, we can see that it's absol absolutely necessary to have uh, the k vectors of high value of, or the incident field has to carry the k vector which you want to detect uh, of spin waves to be able to get the signal out of them. So, and this is equal to restricting the light to subdiffractional regions. In our case, it was on the edges of uh, these disks. So to verify our technique, we also perform the experiments with uh, the coherently excited spin waves. So we fabricate, we fabricate the uh, conducting antenna in the vicinity of our disks. And this antenna serves as a spin wave source via, via the Erstedt field coupling to the magnetic layer. So first of all, we perform kind of conventional experiment with the RF excitation of the spin waves. Uh, we park our beam spot in the vicinity of the antenna, sweep the frequencies uh, of the RF source, or RF source or so of the uh, waves which travel through the antenna and detect. And we can see that uh, this diagonal, this uh, coherently excited spin waves, ends up directly in the position of our thermal background noise. But if we move our spot on the dielectric nanoresonator of these silicon disks, we can see that we can immediately see that the thermal background is moved up, which is in agreement with our previous experiments. But also, this diagonal extends to higher frequencies, which means that we were able to detect these higher frequencies. Uh, one thing to note here that we were limited by excitation efficiency of the antenna, so we. Uh, the thermal background edge is much higher than this uh, excitation uh, diagonal. So now uh, we will move to the summary. So we used the near field mediated process to access the higher K values or the shorter wavelengths uh, of spin waves. This near field was induced by MIE resonances, which uh, provide even higher signal than bare film because of uh, the high, uh, because of the creation of the hotspots and low optical losses in comparison to plasmonic approaches. We verify and evaluate the enhancement by measuring the thermal BLS, and we found that the accessible K vector value is increased by a factor of five as well as overall signal. And the method was verified by some kind of real-world experiments uh, with coherently excited spin waves. So at this point, I want I, I want to acknowledge all of the corridors which, which participated uh, at this work, and also I want to point point you for uh, our preprint, which is available on archive. So thank you very much for your attention. And in case you have some question, you can write me an email or find me during the school. Thank you.